Hello, welcome to the talk with T. Renee. I'm your host, T. Renee Mathis, and this episode is about depression. Um, we all are so blessed to be involved with this project by Squeaky Moore and Ken of Todd Nelson, the face of darkness. And I'm with um, Lee Thompson's father, who passed um, what a couple of years ago. Last last year, last year, and one and. Um, for one, I, I my condolences I give to you, sir. Um, I want to talk about Lee because he lives on through us. As an actor, he made it possible that I can be on TV like that. When did you know your son with those beautiful hazel eyes, when did you know that that, that boy has some, some talent? Well, as soon as he was born, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was quite an uh, experience, okay? I was in the room when he was born. And he didn't cry, he just said, huh? And looked around. And he had, actually he had green eyes. Ooh. Okay? They were green, okay. They were green when he was born and they transformed into being those, lo that lovely uh, almond. Where did, where did they come from? What Where's the? Your eyes? My your eyes are pretty too. Mine are dark brown, but they are, they are darker brown than his was. His was a bright brown and mine is a, you know, a, a, you know, a mm -hmm. dark brown. Did mom have those eyes? Uh, she has some beautiful eyes now, okay. But he has, his, his, his eyes were very unique in color. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, you, you're right, when they stood out, when I saw him on TV, I was like, wow. I paused it, DVR. I was like, this guy, these eyes are hand, they're gorgeous. I was like, let me see if they're real. So I went to IMD page. I was like, oh. Yeah. And I saw, oh, they, these are real. These are real. So. And then, when did he get the acting bug? So, like, what was his first? I know it started with Disney, right? Well, no, he didn't get the bug with Disney. Oh. No, no he got it before that. Okay. <laughs> what happened was, um, he loved. I, I used to tell the stories even before he could talk. Okay. Because mm -hmm. that was I, I did professional storytelling. I was a professional storyteller. And so, as he grew, I had to tell him a story every night. <laughs> and no matter what time I got home, he would be awake. Dad, I want a story. So he just kind of grew up with stories. Now, my mother was a storyteller. She was a wonderful storyteller. Um, my grandmother, until the day she died, had kids on her porch in South Carolina that she told stories to. So it kind of ran in the family. Um, and my mother taught me how to, how to, how to tell stories. So um, a little bit later, he started. He was he joined, he was started going to the, when he started going to the library. He, they got they had a little storytelling events there, and he participated in that. And then one day when he was uh, about twelve years old, mm -hmm. he said, "Dad, I'm going to New York. I want to be an actor like you." Wow. And I started to say, "Oh no, we're not doing that yet. You're too young." And then I thought about it, and after having been been a storyteller in hundreds, maybe even thousands of schools. Uh, I knew that if you didn't have your children's minds kind of put together by the time they were 12, you'd never get them, okay? Mm -hmm. And so I kind of capitulated, and he put together his, actually, after that, he went, he, he, he got, he was down in a contest in lower South Carolina, mm -hmm. and he, he won all the awards, okay? And so that's when he said that he was going to go away and be the storyteller. So, hey. Wow, so he got an honest from you. Yeah, and he could do Martin Luther King better than anybody. Wow. All right. Um, and he came, his mother and him came to New York. And she was, and I can, we wound up here about the same time. And he was... Um, he went to Montessori school here mm -hmm. uh, in New York, and he did actually before that. Mm -hmm. All right, because oh, you got me put, trying to put all this stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what what happened was his um cut it, off a cut it off a minute. That's okay. That's okay. We keep going. He was down in North South Carolina, mm -hmm. and he won 
all of this, this com whole competition that was going on, right? Mm -hmm. And he said he was going to New York and he was going to be an actor like me. Like I said, it was, you know, that kind of didn't sit right with me at first. Mm -hmm. um, so he came up to New York and he did, um, my mother, uh, my sister rather, mm -hmm. my sister came to New York with him first. Mm -hmm. And they paid, paved it, they, they, they went up and down trying to get that whole, she was a teacher so she could stay here with this, the summer. At the end of the summer, he had two national commercials and two information. Wow. Okay. So you, hey. Then <laughs> one of those uh, commercials ran for five years. Residual checks, which means, that means, that's big. Residual checks are five years. So you knew at this time, not only does he have it because you saw, but the world was seeing it. Yeah, the world was seeing it, okay. So now, he, Anna DeVille and Smith got this large $500,000, I think it was, uh, thing to do her plays and you know, for her, and she did a play in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Lee was cast in the play. Well, the people were looking for somebody to play the famous Jet Jackson. Mm -hmm. mm. So the scouts in, 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 in Washington, D.C. went back to California, I think it was, and told them that they had found a the per perfect per person. And, he, and, and, and the guy who was putting it together said, I don't care who you find, I want the little boy from the Rover Tussin commercial. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't know that Lee was the one who did the, <laughs> they, they found out that he was the one who did the Robitussin commercial, <laughs> but the agent was in New York, so they came to New York, and they sent for him to come to see it, and he, and he walked in, so he, he got cast for that twice. Wow, wow, so the stars are lining up, and then he goes on to, to do great things, and um, then he moves to California. California, and then Jet Jackson, was, I think, was, most of it was filmed in Canada. Mm. Okay, and but and he had to do all of his school school work at uh, on the, away from school, but he graduated number three in his class. Okay. Creative and intelligent. Uh -huh. And uh, so he went to ch professional children children's professional school mm -hmm. and professional children's school and children's professional school, right? Mm -hmm. I get them back up. <laughs> which one is high school and right. which one is not? Okay, right. but uh, he graduated number three in his class. And the valedictorian and the, and the um, salutatorian were on the stage, and Lee was in the audience sitting next to um, President Clinton. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 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 wow. So, um, later on, and he went to University of Southern California, and he had a scholarships, but scholarships didn't pay for everything, but he paid for his own way through there. Because he had the money. He didn't, have, he didn't owe anything when he got out of college. Mm -hmm. And one thing led to another, so all the way through his career, he just, it was like, yeah. And what was his, his disposition? Because when I would see just like, you know, him around town or interviews, um, always polite, always just good, good hearted person, you know, didn't seem like anything changed, you know, like um, it was what he did, but just not arrogant and it was just no big deal. Well, I think um, he was brought up in families on both sides of his, um, his mother's side and my side, mm -hmm. okay? And basically, the people are pretty level-headed, okay? Mm -hmm. And don't get carried away because they're in the limelight mm -hmm. or anything like that, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So he wasn't... Um, taught to be separatist or anything like that. Mm -hmm. He was just a very kind-hearted person. Mm -hmm. And did you notice when um, later on, was there any changes that you saw or any flags that you, you know, re reflecting back now that? I didn't, mm -hmm. it was completely blindsided me. Now the other side mm -hmm. knew, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. I, didn't know, I didn't know anything about him having any problems that way. When you say the other side, was that like mom's family? They, they knew? His mother knew. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's real. But I, uh, I mean, I just couldn't even imagine that. W whenever we talked, we, we just got along fine. Mm -hmm. And he was, whenever he would write, um, um, he was writing film. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and he would send them to me, and 
we would talk about it and you know we, we could, and if I had, to, had when I had poems and stuff I sent them to him mm -hmm. and he'd kind of critique it for me and mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that and actually we were working together when he passed away I was trying to uh, put together another book of poetry and um, I had some books uh, published in the 70s, mm -hmm. okay? And I never had another one published, so I was gonna try to do that again. And this happened. It was just totally mm -hmm. away from anything I could imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, a, it's a tough a situation. Um, how have you, have you um, progressed with it, um, if we could, you know, go a little bit into that, and, and I know it's tough. It's tough, but uh, I'm not too proud to cry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. So you know, and sometimes the tears come, mm -hmm. and I know that out of some bad things that happen, sometimes some really good things happen. So you have to look for the, the good good things, and they will appear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. You know. What about um, some of the work that you were you were working on him? Are you going to get out there and get this stuff published, your books, and and, and maybe the, some of the other projects? Well, I I have not uh, since then. I've been actually running around a lot from one place to another because then I had to go to California, come to New York, go to South Carolina, where we're from. Mm -hmm. um, you, uh, it's just been a lot of things to slow down the process of what the next move is and how it's going to uh, unfold. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm moving back to South Carolina and I'm planning on doing that. That probably would be best for me. That's wonderful. We definitely thank you for your time and what you said and what everybody else said is that real men cry. Real men cry, real men go through something and I think that is very, um, that's the thing that everybody is saying, you know, if my, myself with my brother, you with your wonderful son, and, and everybody today is saying, Dr. Jeff is saying, it's okay, and we need to keep the, the lines of communication open, and we can, we can call home and say, Dad, you know, I'm on top of, my, uh, on top of the world, but something is missing. Well, it's not, I don't feel like it's unmanned to cry, okay? Mm -hmm. It's abnormal not to cry. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and men are taught that you're not supposed to cry and stuff like that. But that kills your what your inner feeling really is, at, you know, and you suppress it and suppress it and suppress it. You never get rid of it. So crying is a process that helps to relieve that which you could just really store up. You know, the, the, the tears go in and, and, and along with that, maybe a little portion where you, you're healing. And it's best to not hold that in to the rest of your life and, mm -hmm. you know, and not deal with the fact that as human beings, we are tender, loving people. Absolutely. And we thank you for, for coming and sharing your story and sharing some childhood memories of Lee. Yeah. Well, Lee was a wonderful child. He's just, he's just, he's just <laughs> he was quite a, quite a character. Yeah. yeah, and we we'll, we'll always have him. We'll always be able to look 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 at him and look at his body of work that will live forever. Yeah. So we thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for talking to me. <laughs> Thank you for that smile. You have a beautiful oh, smile. Thank, thank you. Thank you. That's it, guys. Thank you for tuning in. It's the talk with T. Renee. Thank you. Bye bye. There's no escape from the smell.